Good morning everyone. Um, today on Curiosities of Staffordshire we're looking straight ahead now at the Hare Castle Tunnel which um, is one of the longest canal tunnels in Great Britain and in fact we're looking at both of them. The one on the left of the picture right now just where the car is is the original tunnel that was built by the celebrated canal engineer James Brindley and it was a gruelling seven year project that was completed in 1777. In fact James Brindley died a couple of years into its construction and the, um, the more modern looking one on the right was in fact a three year pro project that was completed in 1827 by the celebrated engineer Thomas Telford and that was mainly due to the demands of traffic on this part of the canal that was causing the original James Brindley tunnel was causing it to be a bit of a bottleneck and so they needed a, a brand new tunnel to try and manage it and it was it worked in sort of a one-way system where tunnels going one way would use the Brindley tunnel and coming the other would use the Telford tunnel right up until 1914 as a matter of fact and um, you'll notice about the Brindley tunnel it's a lot a lot lot narrower and nowhere near as tall as the Telford tunnel and um, in fact it's very claustrophobic inside and um, literally the only way of getting boats through at that time because it had no towpath was by lying on your back on the boat and literally walking along the tunnel wall and it took a very long time to get through the tunnel and quite a lot of hard work. Uh, the Telford tunnel had a rather more modern solution or rather it did, it, it had, had a rather more modern solution added to it at a later date when like a tug at one end an electric motor would pull the boats through and also of course by that time many boats were using petrol and diesel engines as well which is probably the noise you can hear now is the massive extractor fan that takes out all the pollution coming from the boats which was another innovation added now, as I said the original tunnel was a seven year project in, in the late 1700s and it's pretty much a, tes a testimony really to the sort of ingenuity that need was needed at that time to build these sort of projects because they encountered several problems along the way like um, Stoke-on-Trent's notorious for its having different kinds of soil and different kinds of terrain and um, they literally encountered like several kinds of rock that they had to burrow through on the way and also several problems with flooding as well which um, required the use of like innovative steam pumps to try and get the water out as they went along the Telford tunnel had rather less of these problems and um, obviously in those 40 or 50 years technology had come a long way and it was much much easier to dig the tunnel by that time in fact the Telford tunnel also has several little branches coming off it that go towards local coal mines and um, the idea was that coal could be loaded directly onto the little boats and would not need to be brought up to the surface to be transported to the canal and um, I'm not sure if any of these tunnels are in use these days uh, the pits have long since gone so I, I doubt it but I think this, the entrances are still there and still visible um, right now we're gonna I'll take a closer I'll take a closer walk and um, show you some close-ups of the tunnels themselves and if we're lucky maybe we'll even see a boat coming through you never know okay, so we'll pick it up over there okay so here's just a quick close-up of the original Brindley tunnel long since out of use since 1914 when part of the tunnel actually collapsed on the inside and it's there are no boats admitted today and it's pretty much all overgrown and barred up now really and another quick close-up of the Telford tunnel which is still in use to this this day albeit the use is very highly regulated I think you need some sort of permit to pass through it and it's still quite an, not a very pleasant journey really because it's a very narrow tunnel and you can clearly hear the noise here from the extractor fan um, you may notice the water's like a really ready rusty colour and that's essentially because it is rusty it's got a very high concentration of iron oxide and um, yeah that's the reason for the unusual coloured water so this has been Hare Castle Tunnel and um, I usually tell you about the exact location in these videos but to be honest I'd struggle to describe it but I'm going to put the GPS coordinates on the video and um, someone who's a bit more YouTube savvy than me can find some way of finding the location from that video I'm sure now, um, anyway, it's sort of just off the A500 before you get to Tunstall and before you get to Kidsgrove, but it's actually very, very difficult to find. So, 
so um, if you are coming down, good luck. And this has been Curiosities of Staffordshire, thank you very much for joining me.